Hi, and welcome to my sci-fi, fantasy, and horror short fiction roundup for September 2023. And uh, there's the text version of this roundup, as always, is available online at um, Maria's Reading. There's a link in the description. And the art for this roundup features a detail of a cover art for Fantasy Magazine number 93, and it's made by Lumitar and Adobe Stock Images. You can find out more about the artist. There's a link in the description, too. And let's get going. My first story pick this month is Bozbo Witchbane by Simo Srinivas, and it's from Fantasy Magazine. And I'm going to have to read a part of the story because the prose is just so good. So this is how it starts. Outside is the Palace of Slaughter. Under its gambrels of boiling sky, there is the cold, unforgiving sea. There are mountains ready to cradle your bones. Along its corridors of singing grass, there are horseback warriors who will cut you to pieces. There are witches and there are cats. Quite simply, this is one of my favorite fantasy stories I've read this year. It is gorgeous, it has rich, lush prose, and there's a story that is full of adventure and danger, betrayal and companionship, death and vengeance, and it has two casts as its main characters. I mean, what's not to love? All I can say is read this story and revel in the glory of such a brilliant, uniquely crafted fantasy set in a world I immediately want more. There are sentences, whole paragraphs here that I had to read and reread again just to savor the beauty. My next story pick is The Cursed Universe Inside Your Eye by Angela Liu, also in Fantasy Magazine. Now this one has dark magic, strange powers are at play. It's evocative and unsettling, yet eerily beautiful. And there are layers of pain and deception and spellcraft here. In a story that involves a daughter, the strange world inside her, and the magic and knowledge passed down to her from her mother. My third story pick is Negative Theology of the Child from the King of Tars by Sonia Suleiman, and it's also in Fantasy Magazine. This is, I love this story. It's an intric intricately woven strange and deeply thought-provoking uh, tale where the narrator um, literally, in more ways than one, goes inside the King of Tars, a medieval romance. Uh, and I love that May Suleiman burrows inside the text with a narrator that is seeking out the characters of the story traveling through a realm of allegory and myth, of device and symbiotics. Present, past, fiction and history, everything is braided together here. And there's an evocative lyrical vibe to this whole story that I absolutely love. So many lines here shine and glow. They too will have to find a way on that path between the shafts of light and shadow that make up this cosmos. Great story from the latest issue of Fantasy Magazine. My next story pick is What It Means to Be a Car by James Patrick Kelly at Tor.com. And I, I just love this science fiction story about an AI controlled car dealing with a rather difficult passenger and also dealing with the stranded cloud presence of its mm, sort of dead previous owner, Miss Harada. The story plays out in dialogue between Seishin Toyota, the car, and the passenger, Ketrin Nanhola. And Kelly brilliantly uses this format to reveal the passenger's ulterior motive for the ride and the increasing trouble the car finds itself in. My next story pick is Between Truth and Death on the Murmansk St. Petersburg line by Zohar Jacobs in the Sunday Morning Transport. This is, I, it's such a gloriously mysterious and absolutely wonderful story. It's set in Russia and blends fantasy, history, and the present into a beautifully layered and complex weave. 
There's also strange time skip, time slip things happening throughout the story where past and present and dream and reality are sort of layered one over top of the other in a way that is um, both unsettling and dreamlike. Jacobs gives us a story full of sadness and war, and there is much here that is familiar from what we see happening after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And I just love the gentle and profound blend of reality and fantasy here, and I truly wanted this story to keep going because I wanted more of this world and more of these characters. The next story pick is The Magazine of Horror by Olga Notchre Donald Ekpeki in Apex. This is such a darkly funny meta story about something many writers might occasionally consider. What would you be willing to give in order to get published? And not only published, but also paid very handsomely. In this story, publication comes at a very steep price, but one the writer in the story is still willing to pay. My next story pick is also from Apex, is Jim of P by Benjamin Dehan. This is an ingenious science fiction story set in a cramped dystopian world full of algae. I love the intricate details of everyday life in this strange world and the way you feel that parts of this tiny universe are definitely familiar. My next story pick is Shalom Aleikum by Y.M. Resnick in Diabolical Plots. Now Resnick's story made me smile. It's a story about being an awkward adolescent and being able to see, or maybe hear, the angels that are everywhere in the world, though not everyone is aware of their presence. Resnick turns this into a meet-cute, where two people get to know each other because of, and in spite of, the presence of their extremely impressive angels. My next story pick is Student Living by Ashley Den in Nightmare. A horror story told in footnotes. Can you do that? After reading Deng's story, the answer is a resounding hell yes. It's an impressive feat of subtle storytelling. And the author has this to say in the story notes of Nightmare. Student living is something of a love letter to the makeshift nature of living on a budget as a student. It's bleary-eyed mornings and caffeine-fueled nights with our faces slammed against readings and lecture notes. I wanted to write something that encompassed my love of that experience while also reflecting all the ways it felt, you know, just a little off. It's a great story. My next story pick is The Green Horn by Taylor Ray and Apparition Lit. Now, this is a terrific slice of life fantasy set in a society that fears and kills dragons. Kind of a how to train your dragon vibe. And where one girl goes against everyone's accepted wisdom about the beasts. I love the way Ray depicts the dragons, but I also love the way the relationships, both good and bad, between the young people in the story are handled. And I especially love the way we get to see a new friendship take shape. And hey, a story about vegetarian dragons is definitely worth a look, am I right? My next story pick is A Scarcity of Sharks by Kelsey Yu in Reckoning. And oh wow, this story grabbed me from the first line and never let me go. A group of researchers have used the dead body of one of the world's last white sharks to make an underwater research vessel. But what happens when they take this robo shark into the depths of the ocean will surpass their wildest dreams and nightmares. It's wonderful science fiction, and I also really like how this story gives us a great group of scientists with a bit of workplace romance. Reckoning keeps publishing some really outstanding work, and if you're interested in more stories about environmental justice, this is definitely a zine for you. My next story pick is Quantum Love by Sylvia Heike and Flash Fiction Online. And this is a wonderful, charming sci-fi flash about a computer trying to work out all sorts of complex problems while also trying to solve the problems of the human it loves. Queenie, the computer, is keeping a close eye on the humans around her, and Heike turns the small and keenly observed details into a crafty love story that was also sort of a love triangle. My next story pick is from Beneath Ceaseless Skies, and it's called Holding Back the Darkness. It's by Stephanie Burgess. I'm always a sucker for wolves and girls in stories, 
And in this werewolf tale with a twist, we meet a young woman trapped in a house by an unwanted suitor. The suitor, Everard, has hounded her for a long time, and now she has been imprisoned and is surrounded by wolf men. Now, I love how Burgess lays out the sharp and terrible predicament the woman finds herself in and then twists the weave of the tale at the end. My next story pick is Instructions for the Broken Hearted by Jordan Corella in Lightspeed. This is a gorgeous, dark, and devastatingly sharp story that cuts deep into the pain and emptiness that can follow the end of a relationship, especially if that end didn't just break your heart, but take it from you. I love the visceral lyrical details, and I love the way Corella finds hope in the devastation. My next story pick is also from Lightspeed. Um, it's Eve's Prayer by Victor Forna. I just adore this short science fiction story, structured as a space explorer's prayer to the god that sent them forth in order to find new worlds. Forna's prose wraps so many layers and so much depth of character and world building into less than 700 words. Beautifully done. My next story pick is The Five Remembrances According to STE319 by R. L. Meza in Clark's World. I think I've mentioned before that I am an unabashed fan of stories about aging and abandoned robots. And in this story, we follow the agonizing slow demise of a robot used for war and then abandoned by its own. The robot is trapped, decaying, and, decaying, and then finds a new unexpected purpose. Mesa fits an epic tale of destruction and redemption into this short story, and I adore every bit of it. And my final story pick for this month is Sitting Shiva by Zachary Rosenberg in The Deadlands. I'm going to read a, an excerpt. His sister remains as he last saw her, with straight black hair, dark skin, and sundered skull. Her smile is hollow, her eyes windows to a vacant house. The wound in her head is dark as wine. The edges of her white skirt drip with tendrils of red that vanish like dew against the cream curls of the carpet. This is a harrowing tale of death, grief, and life, with Avram sitting Shiva for his sister Tamar. The problem is that Tamar is still there, clinging to the world of the living, as Avram clings to his own fear and pain. Avram fears the ghost of his sister, but he fears the outside world that took her from him even more. And while Rosenberg's story is full of horrors, life and light is woven into its ending. And that was all my story picks for this month. Um, I'll be back next month. Thanks so much. See you then.